Welcome to Game Foundry Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at Suburbia. Suburbia is a tile land game in which players are building up their own communities. Let's jump right in with a description of the rules, see if the example turns being played, then I'll be back for some closing remarks. This is Suburbia, set up for a two player game to set up. You're going to sort and shuffle the tiles based on type, depending on the letter on the back. And depending on the number of players, you're going to remove some tiles from the game. In a two player game, you want 15 tiles in each stack. In a three player game, 18 in each stack. In a four player game, 21 in each stack. So you can see, because we're a two player game, this B stack has 15 tiles. And then depending on the number of players, you're going to take some of the tiles off the bottom of that C stack. In a two player game it's six, in a three player game it's nine, in a four player game it's 12 tiles. You're going to shuffle in that one round marker into those tiles. You're going to put them on the bottom of the stack. And then no matter what the player count is, you're going to take four tiles from the supply and add them to the bottom of that C stack. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than the others. But after that, you just take some tiles from A and you lay them out along the real estate market here on the indicated spaces. You put four of each of the basic tiles face up on the indicated spaces and lay out the money nearby so everybody has access to it. Then you just shuffle the gold tiles and lay one face up per player. So you can see we're a two player game. So there's two face up goals, but in three or four player game, there'll be that many face up goals. On each player's personal borough, they indicate their income with the cylinder and the reputation with the cube. You can see the reputation starts at one while the income starts at zero. Also, each player puts their marker on the two space of the population track to indicate that they started with two population. Then each player gets a suburbs, community park, and heavy factory in that order from the center space of their borough along with 15 money and their three investment markers in their color. Lastly, each player is dealt two goals, which they can look at. They keep one and remove the other one from the game. During the game, players take turns in clockwise order, and turns are composed of four phases, which are place a tile or investment marker, earn income, adjust population, and update real estate market. And then a final scoring occurs at the end of the round after the one more round token is revealed. So let's go through those parts of a turn. In the first phase of a turn, a player has to decide if they want to place a tile or place an investment marker. Can't do both. And if they choose to place a tile, there's three different options to do so. The first and most common is to take one of the face-up tiles in the real estate market by paying the cost cost of the tile plus the cost of its position in the real estate market. So for instance, if player wanted this tile, he has to pay eight because that's the cost of the tile plus two because that's its position in the real estate market. So that would cost 10. If you choose to place it in your area, you have to place it adjacent to some tiles you already have, but anywhere you like, then you immediately make any adjustments. So for instance, this one gives you one money just because you placed it. So you would adjust your income accordingly up one space on that track. And then based on what it says in the bottom, you would do things. Also, you can see if you place it adjacent to this, you're going to lose one reputation because this is minus one for each adjacent office building. So you have to keep those adjustments in mind when placing your tiles. And you can never adjust above 15 or below negative five. So if you have to adjust further, do not do so. The second way to take a tile is to take one of these face up basic tiles and it has to be available because they are limited. You take it, you pay its cost, but there's no associated real estate cost with it because it's not in the real estate market. And you place it adjacent to any of the tiles you already have and do the adjustments accordingly. After you place it in your area and make the adjustments, you do have to remove one tile from the real estate track by paying its cost, just the real estate cost, not the cost of the tile. So for instance, this one could be removed for a cost of zero, but if I wanted to get rid of this one, it would cost me eight. And lastly, instead of buying a tile, a player can add a lake to his area. You can't do it with any of the basic tiles. You can see there's no lake in the back. But any of these down here, you take them, you just pay the real estate market cost, not the cost of this tile, and you lay it in your area as a lake. And a lake tends to give you money for almost every other type of tile except the lake that it's next to. Instead of placing a tile, a player can choose to place one of their investment markers if they still have one left. An investment marker can be placed on any tile, even a lake, that doesn't already have an investment marker on it. To do so, you pay the cost of the tile again. In this case, this tile costs four, so you'd pay four again, then you place the investment marker on it. Now you double all of its effects. So they happen immediately. You would immediately lose another income in this situation, but you would gain reputation for each of those adjacent to it. Any tile with an investment marker on it is permanently doubled and the investment marker stays there for the rest of the game. You can't move it. But after you place the investment marker, you have to get rid of one of these things in the real estate market and you do that by paying its real estate cost. Um, you, of course, you can always do it for free by going with one of these. And you just discard it from the game. After the placing step, the second phase of the turn is earning income. And a player earns as much income as indicated by their cylinder here. If they have to pay income, they do so with money from their area. But if they have insufficient funds to pay what they owe, they have to pay the additional by moving back one space per dollar owed on the population track. If you reach the zero space of the population track and you still owe more money, the debt is forgiven. You don't have to pay anything else. The third phase of the turn works much the same way, except you have to adjust your population based on your location on the reputation track. You either move your population up or down according to uh, the number indicated. If you have to go below low zero, you pay the additional with one money each. If you totally run out of money, much the same way, your debt is forgiven. It is important to note here that if you ever cross a red line while you're moving your population, after you're done moving, you immediately move back 
uh, each of these one space, income one and reputation one. But if you ever uh, have to pay population and go back across one the other way, you would gain one reputation and one income accordingly. And the last phase of the turn is simply to update the real estate market. You do that by filling any spaces that were gone. So if this tile was taken during the turn, you shift these all down and you flip a new tile from the letter closest to the beginning of the alphabet. So you always flip all the A's, then the B's, and then the C's would be last until that one round to go marker comes up, in which case you finish the round you're on. Round is dictated by all players having the same number of turns with the starting player um, always going first. And then you finish the round after that. So when the one round to go marker comes up, you finish the round you're on, and one more round, and then the final scoring occurs. When the game ends, the final scoring occurs, and first you award goals, and then you convert money to additional population. It's also important to note that red lines are ignored during final scoring. You do not adjust your markers as you pass red lines during final scoring for any reason. So first you award the public goals, and these are the goals that are available for everybody to see the whole game. Whoever has the uh, indicated amount, so in this case, whoever has the highest reputation is going to score 10 points. And if there's a tie, nobody gets it. Um, the goal is totally removed from the game. But both of these will score, and then players will score their secret ones. Remember, they're only going to have one because they get dealt two at the beginning of the game. They have to get rid of one. But if you meet your secret one and nobody else ties you, again, you can't tie, you get it. But nobody else can get your secret one, so you reveal those and score accordingly. Lastly, every five money a player has converts into one population. Whoever has the most population at the end of the game wins. Let's go with this example playthrough. So the first thing players are going to do is they're going to look at the goals they were dealt and they're going to pick one to keep and they're going to get rid of the other one. Um, this player decides he wants to keep this one and he's going to get rid of that one. And this guy decides he wants to keep this one. So this one is gone. So those two goals are out of the game. Now everybody has a secret goal that nobody else gets to see that they're going for during the game. So this player is going to go first because he is the starting marker. So the first part of the turn is either places an investment or takes a tile. He decides he's going to take a tile. He's going to take this mint and it costs 15 plus zero. So it's all his money actually, but it gives him three income when he places it. Remember, he has to place it adjacent to uh, stuff he already has. So he's going to put it right here. So that immediately moves his income up three as indicated on it. And he gets two money for every uh, one of his buildings of this type. So he's going to get four bucks because that includes that one there. So he takes that money from the bank and now he moves on to the next part of his turn, which is the income part. So because his income is at three, he gains three income. And next his reputation is still at one. So he gains one reputation on the track here. He did not cross a red line, so he's okay. Then we just refresh this track by shifting these down and flipping a new one from A because A is the remaining letter uh, close to the beginning of the alphabet. So now it's this guy's turn. He decides he wants to buy this for seven. So he pays uh, seven to the bank and gets his change. And he can place that adjacent to any of the tiles he already has. It was only seven because the space above it was a zero. So he's going to put that right here and he gets one income immediately because it gets one income. He gets plus three population for each adjacent green, which he has. So he moves up three on the population track. And he also gets one reputation for each adjacent office here. So he gets another reputation for doing that. So now for the second part of his turn, his income is one. So he takes one income, but his reputation is two. So he moves up two more spaces there. Then he's just going to refresh this as normal. We're going to move ahead a little bit in the game so you can see some more interesting situations. Welcome back. We progress a little further in the game. It's this guy's turn. He decides he wants to to make this a lake. Remember, you only have to pay the cost up here to make it a lake, not the cost here. So he just takes it, flips it over to its side, and he gets two money for each adjacent tile that aren't lakes. So he gets four dollars for doing so. And then uh, his turn just proceeds as normal. We'll jump ahead a little more so you can see some other things happen. We're further along in the game and it's this guy's turn. He decides he wants one of these basic tiles. So he buys this heavy factory for three. So he pays three, puts in his area. Because it's next to a lake, he gets uh, two money for doing so. He also gets one income immediately as indicated in the tile, but he does lose one reputation because he's adjacent to a green one there. Also, since he took one of the basic tiles, he has to get rid of one of these paying its real estate cost. He decides just going to get rid of um, this one here for no money at all. So it's discarded from the game. And then uh, we proceed with his income and reputation step as normal. We'll be back one more time before the end of the game so you can see an investment. It's now this guy's turn. He decides he wants to invest. So he has to repay the cost of the place he wants to invest in. This one costs four. So he pays $4 to the bank. And then he's going to invest. It doubles the effects of this. So he immediately loses one income because this is minus one. But then he also gets plus one for all of these again. So he gets one, two, three, four more reputation. So he goes up to there and then he proceeds um, with the next part of his turn after getting rid of one of these from the area by paying its cost. He decides he's just going to get rid of this one here and the game proceeds as normal. We'll be back at the end of the game to see the final scoring. Welcome back to getting to the end of the game. This guy just finished his turn and while refreshing the one more round marker came up. So that doesn't go in here. We put it, the next one in. 
But uh, after this round is over, this round ends when this player goes because he's the last player in turn order from the starting player. We're going to play one more round. So this guy's going to get one more turn, and this guy's going to get two more turns, essentially. And after this guy's second turn, we're going to move on to the final scoring. This guy's finished his turn, so now we're going to proceed to the final scoring. Remember, the red lines do not affect you during final scoring, but if you ever passed one during the game, you had to move both of these back one space each. So we're going to go first with the uh, goals, and whoever had the fewest gray buildings gets this one for 15 points. That's this guy because he only has two with against that guy so he's going to collect that and he's going to collect 15 points and then the next one is the highest number of uh, reputation which is clearly this guy at eight so he's going to get 10 points and now uh, next the secret goals so this guy reveals his the most lakes one two three four five he does have the most lakes so he scores 20 points for that and lastly this guy the fewest green buildings which he clearly has gets 20 points players also receive one population per five dollars they have so this guy gets one two three for five points and this guy doesn't have five dollars he doesn't get any points but he's still made it farther along the track so he just edges out the yellow player suburbia is a very clean game and what i mean by that is the artwork the theme the gameplay really lend themselves to a family setting nobody's going to be offended by community building you might even be building a community just like your own but the gameplay is very strategic and it might be a bit much for a really casual setting because a lot of the tiles because in the game the gameplay itself is very simple you're just essentially taking a tile and placing it and the rest of the turn is just maintenance whether it be income reputation or refreshing that but those tiles they affect everything some of them some of them have to do with what other people have in their areas so it can really be a lot to keep track of especially with a lot of players so again that can be a little bit overwhelming for a really casual setting but it is a solid game and it can definitely work in that environment but it's a bit more strategic than meets the eye the one thing new players tend to get caught up on a little bit in my experience is the investments but they get over it quickly there's also that built-in catch-up mechanic where as you score so many points and you pass those red lines you have to move back your income and reputation so that keeps the game tight keeps it fun it's one I strongly recommend you check out if it looked interesting to you. That's Suburbia.